Could this winter be worse than what we saw last year? We're going to look at that in today's video. As promised, it's time for the Tuesday Arctic update as we kind of look at what winter might hold, but we're also looking at what's going on in the weather world today. We do this every Tuesday, and let's start with a quick overview of the satellite, obviously dealing with a major hurricane still here into uh, the Atlantic, starting to make that northward turn. You can see how your Bear Clinic zone is lined up here. You've got quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity along your front in the upper Midwest, dragging back into the plains. We'll see more action today in your jet stream way to the north here. In fact, we're going to see Aaron get picked up by a trough that's going to start to swing through this part of, of, uh, of the globe over the next 48 to, I don't know, 96 hours or so. And then eventually, Aaron is going to be history. Now, what happens after this? We're going to talk about that that in the video today too, but let's start with the Arctic. And if you like digging into this kind of stuff as we head into winter, I hope you'll consider coming back and subscribing. About half of the folks that watch these videos are not subscribers. So if that's you, I keep showing up in the algorithm. It's free 99 and it gives us a chance to geek out together. Okay, we're going to look at a couple of things in this video. First, we're going to look at the Arctic sea ice. We've been talking about this for the last couple of days, but we're also going to talk about the warmer than average waters in the North Pacific and how that could also impact winter coupled with maybe more sea ice. It's still too early to tell. As we head into September, the thing that I'm going to watch is how much snow starts to build up into Siberia. Clearly none yet, nor across parts of Alaska into the Northwest Territories. But I do want to show you how much snow and ice we had last year at this time. Clearly not much snow, but look at the northern extent of the ice sheet north of Alaska. We've been talking about that for the last couple of weeks. This is last year. Watch north of Alaska. Boom. This is this year. So we have a little bit more ice here. Now, What's the correlation? Well, if it stays frozen, any cold air that moves across the Arctic Ocean, if it's frozen, you don't lose that heat in the ocean, unfrozen ocean, into the atmosphere, therefore modifying the cold polar Arctic air. Is there a direct correlation to that? Maybe. And that actually may do the opposite of what you think, because the more sea ice we have across the Arctic, the stronger your polar vortex. A strong polar vortex typically means less intrusions of cold air into North America. However, I'm not so sure that's going to happen, and, and here's why. There's still some melting to go here with the sea ice, especially here across the Arctic. Really warm temperatures over into Siberia tells me that we could see quite a bit of melting, especially just over into this region as we head into the 26th, 27th, and 28th. Now, one thing that says, hey, look, we may not see a whole lot more melting would be some, some signs that we stay colder near Alaska, just north of the Northwest Territories, but look how warm it starts to get towards the first, the second, and the third and historically there will be more melt here this is where we were last year look how much it continued to melt all the way into september you start to see the change though around october and november you get more snow and the ice starts to come back. So a long way to go. And as far as the sea ice extent, here's where we are this year. A lot more ice. Again, that could lead to a stronger polar vortex. That's something I'm going to be watching heading into the winter. Right now, those temperatures across Alaska, pretty chilly across the North Slope. Temperatures in the 40s and 30s. We've seen a little bit of snow here over the last couple of days. It's going to stay cold here. And remember, the days are getting much shorter. A warm up expected as we head toward the end of the week, but some more cold air builds in by the weekend and that knocks numbers back into the 30s. I want to push this out in time because the trend will be for things to start to get colder across this part of the country and also across the globe into North America as we head toward the 1st of September. A wider look too into the Pacific. One thing we're seeing here too, and I think this is going to be a big driver of winter is so those warm ocean temperatures. I want to swing over to take a look at this well above average here. Now think about it. If we Even if we get colder than average temperatures in the Arctic, now you've got warmer than average numbers here in the North Pacific. That could mean some really strong Aleutian lows get wrapped up right? So that temperature difference is just going to increase that thermal gradient. Coriolis effect is going to kick in, right? Everything that moves south swings to the right, moves north, it swings to the right. So now you've got these big lows that wrap up here and that could really flood North America with a strong jet stream. Pacific Northwest could be really active with a strong jet screaming into the Northwest that could keep some of this Arctic air from moving south. That could just bottle the cold air up even more and then we get really strong cold outbreaks. And when you look at the ENSO index, you know, we're looking at right now ENSO neutral conditions and maybe, maybe slightly La Nina conditions trying to rear the head here. And the forecast, the official outlook that came out from NOAA is talking about how it looks like ENSO neutral conditions are present and we may be heading toward a bit of a La Nina as we head into early winter. Typically that could open the door though for some Arctic air to move south. Maybe a really strong Pacific jet into the Northwest, drier and warmer conditions for the deep south, maybe colder and snowier for the Midwest. 
That's just a preview, something I'm watching. A lot of maybes in there, I know. But it's the best information we got. And of course, there are going to be other things that dictate winter. We're going to talk about the Arctic Oscillation as we get closer. What phase will we be in? What's happening in the Pacific? Also, the MJO. So there are a lot of things to look at. So again, subscribe, come back, and we'll talk more about it. Here's where we are, though, today. Let's get into the hurricane. Let's talk about the impacts that we're going to see across the East Coast. Also, some severe weather today. Official forecast still curving this thing out to sea. We do have tropical storm watches. Those may change, so make sure you monitor the latest weather at weather.gov. So the Outer Banks of North Carolina, I think, are still going to feel the greatest impact. The center of circulation is going to move likely north and then curve out to sea. All the guidance is still pointing toward that today. That's why we've not really seen a change in the uh, National Hurricane Center's official forecast. Again, pulling that to the north, it's going to widen out. That wind field will get stronger. So that angular momentum is going to get lost. So a bigger storm, bigger impacts, huge waves along the coast, coastal flooding, high surf, beach erosion. Storm surge could be pretty impressive too. This is an updated look at the peak storm surge forecast. One to three feet all the way down to Duck from the eastern shore of Virginia. Once you get here toward the Outer Banks from Duck all the way down to Cape Lookout, two to four feet. That would be enough to really cause some problems all the way down into this region. And then Pamlico Sound, quite a bit of surge here too, a couple of feet. And then from Cape Lookout all the way down into South Carolina, one to three feet of surge possible. So now we're talking about all the way down through the Grand Strand, some pretty high impacts. Here's an updated wind gust forecast on the European, putting those gusts over 20 to 30 as we move into Wednesday from the South Carolina coast up into North Carolina. So a stiff northeast breeze here, even into parts of North Carolina, while we're not looking at hurricane force winds or even tropical storm force winds up into Virginia and South Carolina. A stiff northeast breeze tomorrow with these wind gusts up to 20 at times. Once you get close to the coast, those winds could gust over 20 to 30. And then look at the green getting very close to the shore. That's 34 up to 40 miles per hour. So I think we're going to stay gusty here along the coast, but look here into the Outer Banks. That's going to be the region that has the most impacts. We get these oranges and even reds just offshore. So from Hatteras all up and down the Outer Banks, winds could gust 50, maybe up to 60. I would not be shocked if we get a hurricane gust here somewhere. Further to the north, the winds also pick up across this region, D.C. You'll notice the winds out of the northeast up into Maryland, but the highest winds, of course, are going to be right along the coast, the eastern shore of Virginia, even Virginia Beach north all the way up into Maryland Delaware the coastal areas here are going to see some decent wind gusts you see the green showing up so 30 to 40 miles per hour possible right along the coast and even up and down the Jersey Shore we could get some decent gusts remember this storm is moving northward as it moves toward the mid-latitudes it widens out so that wind field expands as that energy pushes out from the center of circulation so some pretty decent winds even inland you're going to notice these winds coming out of the east northeast gusty at times as we head into Thursday but right along the coast just offshore look at that 50 to 60 close to 60 anyway getting very close here to the coastal areas of the northeast and it's not just the southeast long island out to parts of rhode island block island here you know this area is going to see some pretty decent winds out towards nantucket winds could gust up to 40 and then further to the north breezy conditions some high surf even if this thing doesn't move to maine all along the east coast we're going to see some pretty big waves with this storm track beyond this there is another one all right, so that's something to keep an eye on as we head toward next week. So by Saturday, Aaron starts to move well into the Canadian Maritimes, gone at this point. Some of the models have it well east of Greenland by the time we get to Sunday. So it's going to get caught in the westerlies and move pretty quickly. And now we're looking at another potential system in the Atlantic on the heels of this one. Now, this would be the European. It tries to take it north. The European is trying to do some funky stuff next week as we head toward the 31st and 1st. So the Gulf Coast states, you need to be aware of that. The GFS has a little bit of a different story. It doesn't really have as strong of a storm here in the Atlantic with that second storm, but the National Hurricane Center is watching this piece of energy, and then things really start to spread out into the following week. I still think you got to watch the south into the Gulf Coast states heading toward the end of the month. Still a long way to go. Here's what we're looking at on uh, severe weather today from the Ohio Valley all the way back into the plains. There could be some strong storms this afternoon, even into parts of Montana. Some of these storms could get strong into parts of Idaho right here as we head into the afternoon with a decent jet streak swinging through, damaging winds. There could also be some hail in this area as well. The tornado risk today, not really that high, but there could be an isolated tornado in any severe weather that shows up, but it's just not the primary threat really across the country right now been much worse for sure. Definitely going to be hot. Fueling some of those storms here across Montana into the 100s again today. As we move into Texas, it's hot here too, into parts of Oklahoma. Let's head east now and talk about this part of the country. Not only are we hot, 
we're dealing with a few afternoon thunderstorms. That actually could relieve some of the heat for you across Oklahoma. Some of these storms, though, could get strong. With all that heat, there's a lot of pent-up energy. So if we can tap into that, there could be some strong downdrafts. That could create some damaging wind gusts. And then as we head into tonight, everything settles down, clearly being driven by the heating of the day. Notice this northerly flow. You can kind of see the shower activity at least trying to push in from the north. Some of that influence of air, and you're noticing even into parts of Tennessee, a bit of a northeasterly flow here. That continues as we head into Thursday, and then our next front starts to move east. This is going to bring our next round of severe weather into the Dakotas as we head toward Thursday, maybe even into Friday. Temperatures are going to be changing big time across this part of the country. Numbers falling as we move north back into uh, the 70s for highs heading into Wednesday across Wisconsin, even as far south as Iowa, Illinois, Indiana. That cool air tries to continue to push further to the south, so as we head into Thursday, you'll notice numbers are knocked back a little bit. So we're not looking at, uh, you know, 90s and 100s into Arkansas. We're just in the 90s and even Illinois and Indiana enjoying quite a bit of relief from the heat. But it stays hot from Kansas, North Dakota, down into Oklahoma. And maybe not as hot as we've seen, but still pretty warm in the 90s as an upper level high sort of stays parked across this part of the country. Here's where we're at as we move further to the east. Clearly Aaron showing up here, a uh, well-defined hurricane on the 3K NAM. Showers moving through parts of uh, the northeast, southern Ontario, a little wet here from Toronto to Hamilton, all the way down to London, and then over on the U.S. side, rain moving down to Rochester, Syracuse, so kind of wet as we head into this afternoon and this evening, and our front continues to drop to the south. Could be some strong storms across Ohio this evening into tonight, rumbles of thunder possible from Pittsburgh north, and then that drops south and continues to weaken as we move into the early morning hours of Wednesday. Here comes Aaron. We're going to start to feel the influence right here along the coast with that northeast breeze. Maybe a few showers, too, with these outer bands starting to get close. A slug of rain moving through the northeast as we head into Wednesday. And then Aaron starts to get picked up. Rain showers, outer bands starting to affect here or east into eastern North Carolina on Wednesday. Cold front moving through the Appalachians. If anything, really, that's going to help protect the east coast and start to pick Aaron up in the upper level flow and then move the storm off to the north and east. Temperatures are going to start to cool down behind the front too. We go from widespread 90s back down into the 70s in some areas, especially across Michigan, looking pretty pleasant as we head into Wednesday. The cooler air tries to continue to push further to the south as we head into Thursday. Look at these highs back into the 70s across Illinois and Indiana and then pushing this out in time even further. A significant cool down as we head towards next Monday. Highs, very pleasant, 60s and 70s across a good chunk of the Midwest and even the upper Midwest. Parts of Wisconsin, look at this, dropping back potentially next Tuesday morning into the 40s. So some cooler weather on the way.